Right. Just before we get going today, Kev, I, mm-hmm. I, I feel like I, I owe you an apology. I'm really sorry about last week, pal. I didn't. I didn't really understand it. If I'm honest, I thought I was doing a good job. But you know, you you are the boss. I understand this is your your thing, and um, I I know my place, and it's fine. I'll, no. I'll you know, I, I I know my place. No, thank you for saying that, mate. You know, it's 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 nothing personal. It's sure, nothing sure. personal. I think it's just just more mm-hmm. in terms of it's the consistency, isn't it? You no, know, of course. And if we start if we start letting everybody just have a go at hosting the podcast, you know, Callum will want to go, and then right. Matt and Tony will want back mm-hmm. on, and it just gets messy. It, it gets messy yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. way, mm-hmm. you know. So I just thought, you know, it's it's. Mm-hmm. I think we can draw a line under it, but I just mm-hmm. wanted to know mm-hmm. that I am. I am sorry. So okay. Well, thank personal. you. I, I I appreciate that. Uh, you know, that's no, cool. Cheers, mate. That's cool. Cheers. Mm. Yeah. Um, actually, the other thing, just before we mm. hit, hit record, um, yeah, yeah. I did want to ask you a question. So, mm. I've got a bit of a fancy event I'm attending um, mm. in a couple of weeks' time. Look at and you. I've got go. a suit, but I know. Thank you very much. I'm I'm coming up in the world. Look at me, thriving, mm. not surviving. Um, I was hoping. Mm. I'm looking for some sort of like fancy kind of like big belt or cummerbund that might go with my outfit and. Is that the kind of thing that you might have access to that you could lend me for the event, Kev? Big, big, big belt, or yeah, yeah, nice, nice, big, big old, nice, big and chunky. Like, make something to make a real statement with. I, I don't, I don't have many options. If I'm on, I, okay. I mean, it, there's there's one one option that I okay. could show you if you're interested. Yeah, in. absolutely, um, absolutely. Hang, hang on, hang on. Um, okay, okay. Oh yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's quite, it's quite a lot. Mm, no, no, I think it'd really set it off nicely. Um, do, you, do you reckon that's something you could do me a little lend off? Um, no, because it's mine. <laughs> And welcome back to another episode of Football Manager Therapy. I am your host, Rich Owens. I'm back. I've been away, but I've come back because I always do. And I'm delighted to be joined this morning by my close first personal friend from the world of podcasting and reality. It's the United City FM. Kev, how are you doing this morning, pal? Hello, Rich. I'm very happy that you're back, mate. It's, it's good. Otherwise, mm. I'd be sitting here all on my Todd, and that <laughs> wouldn't have been a fun podcast for anybody. So, you know, because, you know, I'm, I'm not supposed to host one. So that could be complicated. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's good to see you. I'm doing pretty good, thank you. You know, people have known that the last couple of months have been problematic, but this week has been better, and we will absolutely take better. Hopefully, absolutely. next week will be even better but we'll have to wait and see on that one but yeah i'm pretty good thank you how about yourself how you doing um yeah i'm good mate i'm good Uh, it's been it's been a pretty hectic couple of weeks in on on my end um i put a put a little tweet about it earlier in the week just apologizing basically saying sorry for not being around very much recently so we've had i've had a manic half term with the family and then this last week has been just in terms of uh, life behind the scenes uh, has been pretty hectic so fingers crossed, touch wood, all of the uh, the busy, busy things are starting to quiet down a little bit now. So uh, a little bit more time to concentrate on the things that I enjoy. Um, yeah, just, Rich, uh, you know. Rich, you've got yes. two relatively young children. It's never going to settle down. It's <laughs> never going. It's ne- it's never going to settle down. It's never going to settle you down. You hope it might. Mm hmm. No, it, but it won't. But it, it it won't ever. It literally won't ever. It, it was it was lovely actually. I, I met up with some cousins over the course of the week. Um, mm-hmm. Say met up with. We, we had a bereavement in the family a few weeks ago, and we we had yeah. a funeral. And uh, Kev and I were chatting before we went live. A lot of my family were spread out just all over the world, so it's very very rare we're all in the same place at the same time. And so getting to catch up with my cousins was lovely. But we've all got. We've got, most of us have kids now. And there's a really kind of interesting split in the ages. So, you know, I've got a couple of cousins who are younger than me and they've got two kids who are a couple of years younger than mine. And then I've got older cousins whose kids are a few years older than mine. So we've kind of got that really nice kind of the the, the balance of the generations kind of, you know, has, has stayed the same. And we mm. were all just chatting. Just It was lovely because we were all, all spending some time together, all just talking about how tired we are. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I was like, I, I, I'm, I'm just sat there saying to my younger cousins with kids younger than mine, I was like, it doesn't get easier. 
you, it, they don't get they don't get any uh, any more docile. And then my older cousins like turning around having the same conversation with me, like, oh, trust me, you know, just because they get older doesn't mean they get quieter. I'm like, oh, come on now, come on now. So it's inevitable. It goes on forever, basically. So, so myself and my missus, um, she had a couple of kids from a previous marriage, um, mm -hmm. and they they're grown up and now they've got kids. So I am uh, a step granddad, which is lovely. But we don't have those little kids in the house anymore. So our thing isn't mm -hmm. about tiredness. But we also, as people know, had a, a bereavement in the family recently. So lots of people got together. The most weird conversation I had was with some slightly elderly relative on my missus' side of the family who I've probably seen once in about 15 years talking to me about how my blog was going. I don't, I don't have a blog, I don't, um, but it's about as close as they could get, I think, to actually figuring out what it was that I actually did. But So I kind of had to play along and just sort of, a, yeah, it's good, it's very good. Mm -hmm. blah, blah. It's so weird though, isn't it? It's, it's lovely. Yeah, trying to explain what you do as a hobby to people that just have no understanding of it is the hardest thing to do. Because some, some of my cousins mentioned they, they mentioned things like podcasting and streaming mm -hmm. in front of some some older relatives. So what is that? It's like, well, <laughs> well, we well, don't know and we do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I give I give it a go, and I, I turn on a, a camera and I, I play a game and I talk to people while I'm playing it. And, and I say, oh, what game is it? And I'm like, oh, it's called Football Manager, and it's it's basically just spreadsheets and HR. And they're like, oh, that doesn't sound very exciting. And I'm like, <laughs> sometimes it isn't. <laughs> True. sometimes it's good but sometimes oh, it's it's a tr it's a tricky one. And, like, and people watch you doing that. And I know takes all sorts yeah, doesn't it it really takes does. all sorts and we're all very glad and grateful for the all sorts <laughs> absolutely we are because as kev said otherwise it's just a sat in a room talking to ourselves which is nobody wants to see uh by the nobody. way people anybody out there listening or watching the all sorts that's you that is so mm -hmm. that's <laughs> <you>. hi <laughs> <laughs> hello all sorts thank you thank you so much for just validating this for validating all of this it's a wonderful wonderful thing so it is Tricky thing to explain to people that aren't necessarily, uh, you know, fans of, of football straight or have no concept of things like streaming. So, yep, it's a tricky one. But eventually they might come around to the idea. Eventually. They, they never will. Eventually. No, they never will. They never will. Goodness gracious me. So, I mean, look, we've we've explained the concept of a football manager and streaming to strangers. <laughs> But, you know, in, in terms of people that are in the know and, and understand mm. the core concept. Yeah. Um, Kev, have you been playing any Football Manager this week? Um, I, I have, which is really, really nice. positive for me mm -hmm. because there have been lots of gaps, as we say, over the last few weeks, sure. which has been problematic. But so I got the second half of my week in this week in streams, and it feels mm -hmm. like I'm back into the routine and the consistency and the habit of it mm -hmm. again. So Wednesday through Friday we did this week, which was great to get back in. Um, so you were suggesting that we were now talking to those that were in the know and understood the process and what we're doing can anybody that understands the process and knows what they're doing please tell me because i haven't got a clue <laughs> it's been a nightmare <laughs> but it's been a fun nightmare in a lot of ways so just a little bit mm -hmm. of a preface uh i hadn't played the game in about nine days something like that since uh mm -hmm. my last stream when we came back on wednesday and there is that random thing where you load it up you sit there and you look at it for a moment you go Oh, yes. I, I remember now. Um, it was going really, really, really well. Kind of not. So I'm at Colwyn mm -hmm. Bay in the Welsh Leagues. I found mm -hmm. them in the second tier and got them promoted, which was lovely. Um, mm -hmm. I then spent a season with them predicted to be bottom of the table and get relegated. And we finished fourth, which was amazing. And mm -hmm. so you then think, well, okay, so the tactical setup works. We were fourth, but there's an improvement that we can make in terms of the quality of player a little bit. If we wheel and deal a little bit and get the right people in, we can move this club forward and get slightly better or at least match the results, basically, of this season where we mm -hmm. overachieved. So I spent a summer transfer window on stream uh, a week or two back uh, with my stream, finding some new players, putting them into place. Um, and we all agreed that uh, whilst we had probably taken away 
the roundness of some of our players through all of their different attributes. We had identified very specific key attributes that were going to make them better at the role that we wanted them to play. Mm -hmm. So they might not have had all of the physicals and mentals, but my creative player could pass and had good technique and had vision, etc. You know, so whereas before yeah. one of those was really low and the others were relatively low, but he had some good mentals and physicals. Now we're specifically going towards the, the, the role that we chose. So we did that throughout the squad. And actually, I thought, got a really good team together. Half, you know, mm -hmm. at least half of which were what we had previously um, in the fourth place season. So we started with really, really good high hopes. They didn't mm -hmm. last very long, Rich. They ah. really didn't last very long. I'm going to go in-game. I'm just mm -hmm. finding them. Um to show you uh, to tell you exactly how bad it got because it got oh, really bad so beginning of last uh this last season just gone we won all of our friendly matches and thought brilliant it's all mm -hmm. working we're getting goals it's looking great we won the very first game in the welsh um league cup which was fantastic and then the league season started and we played last season's champions in Cardiff Met Uni and got a draw. And I thought, not mm -hmm. bad, not bad. And then we lost, lost, drew, lost, 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 drew, won. That was the next dozen games or something. And it just did not work. I don't know why it didn't work necessarily at the time, because it was mm -hmm. the same tactical setup with one or two little minor tweaks and maybe a player role that had changed. We'd got a, mm -hmm. uh, a few new players in that were bedding into the system. So you kind of expect it's going to take a moment, but not yeah. 12 games of losing, basically, for mm -hmm. it to figure out. We got a win, which was positive. And then immediately afterwards, we lost again, 4-2. <laughs> so you go, oh, okay. Now, at that point, mm. that section of uh, a win, a loss, a draw just before that was the section that I was playing on the stream on Wednesday. So we'd come back in on Wednesday, and that like 10-game losing streak was what I saw when I opened it up and went, Oh, yes. <laughs> so we got a draw, we got a win, then we got a loss. It was very inconsistent, very frustrating, though. So all the way through the stream, I'm going, I'm not quite sure I understand this totally. We all think that mm -hmm. some of these players are pretty decent. I mean, for the level that we're playing at, of course. Sure. But it's not working. And through that loss period, uh, we were playing a 3-5-2 primarily. And I mm -hmm. didn't want to change that. For two reasons. One, because I'd never previously got the three at the back to work for me. And the previous season, we'd finished fourth. And I was really quite excited about getting it to work. So I wanted mm -hmm. to stick with it. And two, in that summer, because it had worked so well, I made the really smart managerial decision to get rid of all of my wingers. So I had no <laughs> wi uh, wide attacking players because I wanted to play the 3-5-2 with the wing backs, etc. And all that stuff. So I geared my squad towards it so those were reasons that i didn't want to change it but on that wednesday when things were still going relatively badly and then there was a little bit of a, uh, a good uh, spot and then it went bad again of course mm -hmm. what happens as a streamer uh, and mm -hmm. all the streamers out there will relate to this i'm sure is that you get you know x amount of people in your stream all giving you lovely really well considered advice about how they would change it because it works on their save or it worked for them three years ago or you know you might want to change it to this and if you pay attention to the next streamer that you are watching when they are struggling pay attention to the chat and you will see play a target forward Play a little nippy poacher. Play three at the back. Play four at the back. Play three um, three wide men down the left-hand side. Play no wide men down. There. And you will see all of it in the space of about 20 minutes because that's what happens when people are watching you and, this, and you're struggling. They give you all of the advice. Mm -hmm. But there was a relatively strong theme about it's not going great. You can see it's not going great. We need to change something. Maybe go four at the back at least and see what happens in the next little while. There came a point on that Wednesday afternoon where I just got frustrated. 
not in any mm -hmm. massive way, but just internally with myself and the fact that we were on this like 10 match losing streak and it was all pretty poor and I didn't know how I was going to change it. And they were going, play the diamond. Don't have to go wide. Just play the diamond and play four at the back of the blood. So I went, fine, stuff it. You want it? We'll do it. And I did that mm -hmm. moment of we're going to go into a second tactical setup. We're going to set up a 4-4-2 a diamond just because they wanted it. And we're going to put the gag and press on with no changes. And we're going to play it. Mm -hmm. And we won 4-0. <laughs> now we then we then played the new saints and anybody that knows welsh football will know that the new saints are pretty much impossible to beat. even though they didn't win the league title last season they're still really hard we lost mm -hmm. to them 2-1 which actually, again, isn't a bad result when you consider no. who they are and the fact that they were at the top of the table at the time. So um, the following match, after our 4-0 win and our 2-1 close encounter with the New Saints, we won 6-0. This is going really well, Rich. All of a sudden, yeah. my chat yeah. were really Suddenly. loving it. <laughs> yeah, what are the chances? I don't understand why they were really loving it, but they were really, really loving it. Um, mm -hmm. And so then, then I couldn't change then. back, could I? because I had no. to play the, the diamond in midfield <laughs> and the four at back because it was working so much. And we lost, 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 <laughs> drew, lost, drew, was my next dozen matches, playing mostly the diamond until about the last couple where I said, stuff it, you lot were wrong. I'm going back to my 3-5-2 <laughs> to see if I can get it to work. Uh, and we didn't. It went really badly. So I quit. And the reason oh. I quit was because mm -hmm. twofold. One, I got called into the boardroom to talk about a few bits and pieces and appease them, and that was fine. But I could see the writing was on the wall that that was going to mm -hmm. be my near future for every other day for the next four weeks or whatever. And two, sure. I couldn't figure it out. Mm. I genuinely couldn't figure this out. I thought my players were good enough. I thought that um, there were one or two in there that were really good for the level that we were playing at. I'd played the 352 in about four iterations of it, trying to figure some stuff out. I played the 442. I played a 433, mm -hmm. I think, on one occasion just to change it again to see what happens. And nothing worked. And it got to the point where I thought, okay, well, I can sit here in my journey save across the British Isles. Mm -hmm. I can sit here and try and figure this out for the next um, five streams and still potentially get the sack. Or we can just journey. And we can just yeah. move on and say, okay, it was an experience. We did really well to get them up. We did really well to get them into fourth. And then it went wrong. Mostly my fault, I'm sure, in some way. Although I still don't quite know why it went as bad as it did. But it did. Mm -hmm. And they finished off the season about half dozen fixtures after I had been gone. And they drew, lost, drew, drew, won. So it wasn't a massive upturn. It was just what it was. So mm -hmm. I left the club. And I was, you know... In a roundabout way, I'm a bit sad that I left the club because nobody wants to sort of have to walk away because it's going so badly. But it went so badly. It really did. Other than that 20-minute period where I won 4-0 and 6-0 and my chat went, see, <laughs> told you, <laughs> which was so painful. It was so painful for me. As the streamer sitting in the midst of that, you're just going, no, please, just lose again. I want you to lose again. <laughs> <laughs> and they, you know, eventually they did, but it was it was a problem. So on the Thursday uh, last thing, literally last thing on the Thursday stream, I resigned. On mm -hmm. the Friday, we looked for some jobs. We got mm -hmm. a few interviews, primarily what I wanted, because I started in the sixth tier of English football with Hampton and Richmond for a couple of seasons, mm -hmm. then moved to Wales. I, I wanted to go to one of the islands or Scotland next if I could if I could find sure. a decent role there. And we, we applied for several jobs on the Friday, you know, the likes of Stirling Albion and um, Hamilton was the first one we had as an option and they decided not to employ me, etc. Then football manager gets really weird, Rich. And I know mm -hmm. that, you know, everybody knows that it has this opportunity to get really weird. So we didn't find a job on the Friday. So I said, on okay. uh, on my weekend, I will do mm -hmm. some work on it, probably find a job myself, because I don't want to do that type of stream too much, Yeah, um, the job hunt kind of stream. So I'll probably mm -hmm. find a job and set it up a little bit, and then we'll come back on Monday next week with a, a job yeah. in place and we can get going again. So that's the thought. 
I had a really, really lovely day yesterday. So we're recording this Sunday morning. Saturday, mm -hmm. I had a really lovely day. My missus was busy and happy to be doing whatever it was she was doing. Uh -huh. And I watched football and played football manager. And I haven't done that for ages mm -hmm. because I don't play off stream at all, yeah. really, because I like to keep it fresh for the stream. I don't have a mm -hmm. save that's not my stream save. And most of what we do is on the stream. We try and do most of the transfer dealings and all that stuff. So it's very rare that I get an opportunity to literally spend like seven hours yesterday playing football mm. manager at a relatively slow pace, it must be said. But the reason for it is because half of that was trying to find a job, you know, and we had several interviews and various mm -hmm. ones didn't work out. And then once I'd found a job, and we'll get back mm -hmm. to that in a second, you have mm -hmm. lots of things to do because it was actually the yeah. summer window. So I could go for a complete summer transfer window because five seasons in, if I bought them into the start of my transfer window on Monday and said, this is my new team and these are the players, they'd go, we don't know who any of those are. Mm -hmm. that, uh, I don't know who this team is. You know, what have they done? Where have they been and all stuff? So it doesn't matter that on Monday I'm going, I had a transfer window at the beginning of my reign and this is now my team because this is the team you're going to get used to watching in the next little mm -hmm. while anyway so that was my choice so i spent seven hours playing football manager yesterday rich and it was very very lovely nice and i got a job and this cool. is where it gets weird so okay. if you really really analyze what happened here is i went to hampton and richmond as a manager with no coaching badges at all mm -hmm. and limited sunday league experience I got a coaching mm -hmm. badge while I was there, which is great, but we finished a mid-table in the sixth tier of English football twice, and I didn't feel connected to it, and I didn't feel like I was moving them forward, and we didn't have much finance and all that stuff, so I walked away. I went to Colwyn sure. Bay, who had dropped down into the second tier during that time that I was at Hampton, uh, and in my first season, I got them promoted, which is kudos. That's good. That builds your reputation, yeah. and I'd worked on a second coaching course a little bit in my second season with them as well, so we were improving, and then we got fourth. And that mm -hmm. was pretty good, considering we were supposed to get relegated on that season. Yeah. And then we had the season from hell and nothing worked. And I won like three times in the league, got about 14 points overall, I think it was, and just could not get anything to work. And then I walked away. And with mm -hmm. all of that in mind, bearing in mind that I then went and asked for a few different teams if I could be their manager and they went uh no no thank you very much it's fine you you do you we'll we'll be over here doing us it's fine you carry on I found an interesting option but it was an interesting option back in England and it wasn't the mm -hmm. way uh, the way that I originally thought my time was going to go mm -hmm. but when you find a championship club that are supposed to finish mid table Mm -hmm. And they finished dead bottom of the championship in their current season. And they sack their manager and dropped down to League One. You mm -hmm. think two things. One, well, they're never going to look at me because they're a former championship team. And I've been working in the Welsh football system. All respect to the Welsh football system. But it's not very often you get a manager from there going into a relatively well-known club. Uh, mm -hmm. But a club, nonetheless, that went down to League One. Mm-hmm. So I applied for it because I thought, actually, it's a, a decent sized club that's got an, a mm. bit of a name. And it's not that long ago that they were in the Premier League either. Not really. And all of a sudden, this team that were finished, uh, Jude finished uh, 11th and finished like 24th or whatever it was in the uh, league, uh, in the championship, went down to League One, offered mm -hmm. me an interview. Oh. And I thought, okay. That's interesting, but I've had lots of interviews across some Scottish clubs that probably match them in terms of star ratings of the club and all that kind of business. Sure. Uh, so I wasn't hopeful, but I thought because it's such an interesting opportunity, because they're going to be a big force in League One and it will give me a good uh, springboard potentially, I'll mm -hmm. apply for it. I only went and got the job. Hey. And I'm now a, a League One club who was a championship club last season who was due to finish in the champ in the middle of the championship last season, was in mm -hmm. the Premier League a little while ago. I'm at Stoke City. Hey. How, how do you go from Hampton and Richmond in the sixth <laughs> tier of English football for two seasons and don't really progress them to moving to a second tier Welsh team, getting into the Welsh Premier League, finishing fourth above expectation, then having the most worst season in the world 
and Stoke go, that's our guy. <laughs> but they did. <laughs> And this is a bit of a spoiler for anybody listening to this on the Monday because you won't find this out, on, anybody else won't find this out until the Monday afternoon live stream that we do to introduce my te new team. But I am now League One's Stoke City manager. Wow. Interestingly, they had mm -hmm. quite a lot of players, obviously, that had relegation release clauses and other bits mm -hmm. and pieces and some problems with the fact that they get got relegated and didn't want to be there, even though it was probably mostly their fault. What can you say? Yeah. But it is, you know. Um, <laughs> so lots of them left. Mm -hmm. I went into a club that when I showed up had a bank balance of, I think it was about £14 million and about £900,000 of that in a transfer kitty. Right. Mm -hmm. I have completed my transfer business because yesterday I played football manager all day and it was very, very <laughs> lovely. I am sitting on the first game of the season, just about to play that on my live stream on Monday against Bromley for anybody who's interested. Okay. Uh, 14 million in the bank, 900,000 in the transfer kitty. I've currently got nearly 70 million in the bank. And 26.8 million in the transfer kitty. And I've done all of my transfer dealings because so many of my good players were mm -hmm. desperate to leave. And they yeah. all had like 13 million pound release clauses. Now, I only got one or two of them to actually go for their release clause. A lot of them were like 7 million, 6 million, whatever it was that they mm -hmm. went for. But I, in the end, I sold, let's go and have a look. Uh, 56 million pounds worth of players, but I'm in wow. league, but I'm in league one. Yeah. And you can't spend 56 million pound in league one because nobody yeah. will come to you. That's worth any value of that sort of ilk. I have bought 14.75 million pounds worth of players into a league one club, which is pretty okay. impressive. And a couple yeah, of loans from Man United and Liverpool as well, which helps immensely. Mm -hmm. But I feel like for league one, we're in a really good position because I was able to Absolutely. pick and choose the ones that I was allowing to leave. And there's still two or three in there that should not be playing in League One, Rich, because they're far <laughs> too good for it. But I haven't let them go because they had okay. contracts for a couple of seasons left or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a That's, fun start. <laughs> it's, you're going to have a good time there, Kev. I, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. When you started kind of, you know, alluding to who the club might be, mm -hmm. a little alarm bell started flashing in the back of my head thinking, he's going to say he's managing Sheffield Wednesday. Oh, I and thought I'm, you might for a moment. <laughs> yeah. And I was, I'm, I was like, oh, okay, they're, they're a club that, you know, they're predicted a mid-table championship finish. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. oh, Okay, because you're, you're what four seasons in, maybe. Five uh, I've seasons? just had my fifth season. Just had your fifth season. So we're in twenty twenty eight, basically. Twenty twenty eight now. Okay, so yeah, but by around that kind of time, you'd be thinking yeah, there is the potential for them to kind of you know fix things. I think mm -hmm. it seems to be quite a commonplace thing with with saves that you see on Football Manager this year is that Sheffield Wednesday seem to be a club that change ownership fairly early on in the save, yep. which is great. More mm -hmm. of that in reality, please and thank you. <laughs> And, I was like, and, and they 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 invest, um, yep. and I was like in my head, I'm thinking, but there is that there's always that potential, isn't there, for you know the wheels to fall off. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. if he's managing the Wednesday, I'm not sure. We're really gonna have to lean into the therapy part of the podcast because I feel like I'm <laughs> gonna have to be coaching him emotionally over the next couple of months. But Stoke City, what an absolute touch you've had there, Kev. It's like, a pretty impressive one. Sheffield yeah. Wednesday, by the way, Rich, just so you know, Sheffield oh, Wednesday came down with us last season. So they're in the, there in the you league go. one as well, uh, along with Preston, uh, one okay. of the ones that got relegated last season. Now, I am not, I am mm -hmm. not top of the pre-season preview of League One because okay. there's also the likes of Portsmouth down there. And they mm -hmm. are currently top of the pre-season preview with the likes of Rotherham and West Brom. So I'm sitting oh, wow. in fourth. So if you mm -hmm. look through, we've got Portsmouth, Rotherham, West Brom, Peterborough, Sheffield, Wednesday, QPR, Blackpool, Preston is the top nine predicted clubs in there. It's still not going to be an easy season in the sense of mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to walk this league because there's a couple of clubs that are above us that have got even better players than we have potentially. And there's just going to be a slog to get through 46 games or whatever it is in the league one season. It's going to be hard work anyway 
just mm -hmm. to get everybody yeah. to be fit all the way through. Because you're only allowed a 22-man squad plus under 21s or whatever it is, I think, mm -hmm. to make up any other gaps you want. So it's not a, a massively experienced squad in a lot of sure. uh, senses. So there are going to be some challenges in it. It's going to be an interesting ride because I genuinely feel like even if I don't get automatic promotion in the first season, we can be there or thereabouts and then we can move that on from there. And I've got some really good players for this mm. level of football. If I go and uh, just say uh, one of my players is worth in League One uh, 15 to 17 million pounds. Wow. Okay. Because they shouldn't be there. <laughs> they should, they, they just, just physically shouldn't, shouldn't be there, yeah. But, you know, That's... I haven't let them leave yet, and nobody's come in on their release clause mm -hmm. or whatever they may have. And it may still happen. I'm sitting on the 29th of July for the first game of the season, just about to be played. So we've still got a month of the transfer window, and another three players could leave, and I might have to replace them. But mm -hmm. I've got £26 million in the bank. So whatever it is at the highest point that I can find a player that will come mm -hmm. and join me, I can pay for them, which is fantastic. Yeah. It's but how does that work? How do you get to that point from being at Hampton and <laughs> Richmond and Colwyn Bay and being dreadful for the last season? It's a bizarre one. Hey, it, you know what? Sometimes it's just better to not question these things, <laughs> I find. Like, was it during the interview? Did you just keep on like holding up like a little picture of Roy Delap? Just go, hey, <laughs> hey. Like, well, yeah, I hey. love him. But, oh, that's the other thing that I can tell you. Uh, as mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. of a spoiler for anybody, I, okay. I, I found a really, really good gem of a young player, Rich. Uh, okay. 20, uh, 20 years old, right? Mm -hmm. bear, bear this in mind, the fact that you and I both love a big meaty man up front, et cetera. Right? Absolutely. Okay, so I found a six foot five. Nice. Six foot five. Nice. 20 nice. year old Brazilian Six foot five, 20 year old Brazilian called Thierry Henry. <laughs> <laughs> That's just why not? I mean, you have to, don't you, really? And then you actually look at him, and he's got uh, 13 pace for a big guy. That's not too bad. Uh, mm -hmm. six, uh, 16 balance, 17 jumping reach. He's got 16 heading. He's got bravery. He's got a bit of stamina and strength. 20 years old. Brazilian target forward called oh, Thierry Henry. <laughs> that's perfect. That's <laughs> How absolutely cool is that? perfect. So that's we're gonna, superb. We're going to see whether we can use him this season and see what happens. But you're going to have yeah. the, you're going to have the best time. You're going to have or, the best or time the worst time. time if or for the whatever worst. reason it doesn't no work middle ground. at all. <laughs> I mean, even, it's... even finishing mid table, I'm probably going to be sitting there going, How'd that happen? Why did we finish mid table? For goodness sake, <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> and it, it sounds like, you know, for, from somebody who has had, you know, a fair amount of experience managing at that kind of level on previous FMs, mm -hmm. the championship and League One mm -hmm. are absolute pigs to get out of at the best it's of such times. It's a slog, isn't it? It's so big. It's, it's, such, it's such a long season. You know, you've got to, you know, that there's restrictions on squad size. So you, rotation is key. Like yep. a 46 game season is, is obscene anyway. Yeah. And then it's, then you've got the risk of playoffs. You've got, got to try and keep people healthy. You've got to keep morale up. Yep. And then, you know, after, you know, after four or five seasons of, of, of an FM save, that's when FM starts to go proper FM, isn't it? So the fact it that is. you're down there and you've got the likes of, you know, Pompey are down there. Mm -hmm. um, you've got the Albion down there who were, yep who can be very good, like, you know, Stoke, mm -hmm. Sheffield, dare I say Sheffield Wednesday. You say These it, are teams. dare to say it. I'll, I'll say it. <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday, Kev. You've got, you've got the Wednesday down there with you. Anything could happen with Wednesday. It, yep. it, honestly, it's like just those on their own. Like if, if somebody said to you, right, Sheffield Wednesday are in League One, you'd go, yeah, I'd, I'd put, I'd, I'd say that they were going to be there or thereabouts come the end of the season. Mm -hmm. Stoke are in League One. Oh, you'd fancy Stoke for it, wouldn't you? West Bromwich Albion are down there. Oh, surely West Bromwich Albion are going to be good. Suddenly that list of contenders is 10 teams long. Yep. Half a dozen into two automatics and one promotion spot. Yeah. It's still yep. a challenging one to figure out. It absolutely is. But I think you're going to have a great time with it. The, yeah, the, the, uh, there, there are two more little bits that might interest you about this particular okay. setup. Firstly, uh, you talked about the possibility that I might have ended up at Sheffield Wednesday. I mm -hmm. almost, almost cool. ended up at Morecambe. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that would have been a fun one, wasn't it? Because they came up as available and I decided in the end not to apply for it. And I think mm -hmm. given that I'm at Stoke now, I probably could have got the job at Morecambe. But probably, yeah. there are two reasons that I didn't apply for it. Firstly, because at the time, I really didn't want to go back into England at this point in the save. I wanted to experience mm -hmm. the other leagues as much as I could. And secondly, I just sat there and thought, I don't know if I could do that and be happy about the fact that this is Jeb's save as well on yeah. the podcast and other bits and pieces. It just didn't feel quite right to do it, mm -hmm. but I could have ended up there. The second piece of information that might surprise you a little bit, um, because I believe this is might have been where he, he starts at in real terms. Mm -hmm. There is a guy on our network, Save Rich, that I've had at Fulham for a little mm -hmm. while, Mm -hmm. called Tezgill, yes, who came through the ranks, I believe, at Stoke City and then in-game in the network save moved to Liverpool before I picked it up. Mm -hmm. Now, he is not quite as good here as he mm -hmm. is in my network save one. But for this level at League One, he's still <laughs> really good and he's 22 <laughs> yes. years old and he's not even my first choice striker alongside my target forward because i've got mm -hmm. tyrese campbell who is yes. just uh, a little bit more uh kind of experienced at this point but tezgel mm -hmm. will probably take that mantle halfway through the season as you tend to do and he'll come through a bit and all the stuff if mm -hmm. i can make it happen but i've got options but that's interesting isn't it you know tezgel playing well for me at fulham in the premier league in about season mm -hmm. six or whatever He's now playing for me in League One at Stoke City <laughs> <laughs> in about season six. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. I mean, obviously, there's some good teams, but mm -hmm. I, I, I fell on my feet. I fell on Absolutely. my feet, ultimately. You've, you've fallen <laughs> upwards. And it's it's Again. always a wonderful, it's always a wonderful thing to do. But you know what? It's and again, spoilers for everybody who's watching this. We had a little chat about what we we're going to talk about before we were recording. We Pardon, what are the we things try I was, to I do said, that occasionally? <laughs> occasionally, we we try not to wing it. And one of the things <laughs> I was I was thinking to myself is that wouldn't it be nice to talk about? Because we've both had, you know, I think everyone's had experiences of bad runs of form on the game, and it's all about what it is that motivates you to kind of carry on you know re load that safe back up again or in terms mm -hmm. of creating content get back in front of a camera and kev said well i'm probably gonna answer a few of those questions when i discuss it and he has very <laughs> eloquently but this is was going to be one of the things i, I was wanted, wanted to talk about it's that falling upwards into mm -hmm. something better, just instantly like that that motivation to want to play the game just mm -hmm. you go from almost dreading it like oh, do i really want to can I do it? You know, I, I had it with Mexico last year, just dreading going live, dreading that save because nothing I did worked. So it was just three years of abject misery in Mexico and nothing I did, nothing worked, couldn't change anything despite having good, it just wasn't working. And then I made the change. I just made the choice to just like rage quit on stream, mm -hmm. start something new. And then I went to Stuttgart, which meant nothing to me, but I was like, it was fun. And I was yep. like, I'm just enjoying playing the game again. And that leap that you've made from a struggling Colwyn Bay side to suddenly a Stoke City team where you've got a budget and you've got good players and that excitement just to get back down in front of the computer and play the game again mm -hmm. is such a nice feeling. You know, sure. it's, you, know I, you and Jeb talked quite eloquently last week about, you know, what you do, you know, and what people like to do when they're maybe a little bit burnt out on things like Football Manager. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> just the, the 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 joy of wanting to sit down and spend time playing that game is I, you can't put a price on it it's brilliant no, it's such absolutely. a lovely feeling you know mm. i've i've been feeling it myself over the last few weeks you know i've i've uh, i've been behind in terms of my streaming the only streams mm -hmm. i've managed for the last four and i've been when we've network gamed which yep. is brilliant fun and i absolutely yep. adore it mm -hmm. but my my save has been feeling a bit neglected mm -hmm. and it's not through the the lack of wanting to play it Sure. I've want I've, I've just physically haven't had the time to sit down and and stream and and play it. I've I've done a few little bits and pieces offline myself. Nothing nothing major. Mm -hmm. But just because I've wanted to get just get back in the chair and play it a little bit and that's mm -hmm. 
a really, really, really nice feeling to have, especially, you know, because it's, you know, we're only in late February now. The game's only really been out for, you know, three or four months. But, you know, some people, you play a lot of any any kind of game, the motivation starts to slip, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But I'm at the stage where I really want to dive back into it and get going. And I just, I'm excited. I miss, you know, the excitement is there. I just want to yeah. give it a go. Just want to give it a go. It's a really, really nice thing to be able to do. You know, I struggled early part of my previous season with Ajax. It a really, really rough run of games. And I was like, oh, what mm-hmm. do I do? What do I do? Fortunately, I made some changes and the changes worked and it started to get better. Mm-hmm. But if they hadn't done that, you start thinking to yourself, oh, what's the next move? Where do we go next? What do we do? And, you know, if the Stoke job had come up, I'd probably have taken, probably have taken <laughs> Stoke. Come on! Like, it's it's great. It's, it's really, really exciting. And I, I love see, that, you know. This is what scares me, genuinely scares me the most about the potential mm. of doing a one-club save mm. and nailing your colours to the mast and saying, this is my one-club save. Because I can't guarantee as my one club save that I won't have my Colwyn Bay season. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, what do you do with the thought that you might lose your club? Especially if you're in the amazing situation that we'd all really love to be in of somebody like Callum, who's mm-hmm. dedicated himself to Slough for the last couple of FMs because of the connection to the club and the people and being there at the club and being made a big deal out of and all that kind of stuff and genuinely mm-hmm. feel connected to it. What if you then don't succeed and you get the sack at your one club save? <laughs> and I genuinely, it brings me out in like heart palpitations thinking about having to do it. So that's why the journey save for me is so much better and more fitted for who I am. Because if there's Mm -hmm. a moment where Colwyn Bay happens, you basically just say, okay, it's not ideal, but in the world of football, IRL managers occasionally just go, this isn't for me, and walk away. They just do sometimes. (laughs) It's not always the club that get rid of their manager. Sometimes it just happens that way. So I feel happy about having the opportunity to do that. Now, falling upwards to Stoke is a bit weird, and I'm not sure what the game algorithm has in the uh, amongst it to make those sorts of things happen occasionally because it feels like I should be at Morecambe and not Stoke, potentially, with all due respect and love to Morecambe. But that one club save just absolutely scares me as a streamer, as a mm-hmm. player of the game on a Saturday when nobody's watching. It's fine. You can do what you like with it and I'd feel comfortable. But do you feel the same way about that? Because I genuinely don't know whether I could do a one club save as a content creator, especially yeah. having connected up to the club. Yeah, exactly. I think that's that's one of the biggest, that's one of the biggest challenges with the one club save, isn't it? Because if it all starts to fall apart a little bit, there's no plan B. Like that's what I, are I, people's I, I, plan B? That's an interesting question, isn't it? To get people that is, isn't it? views on, if you want to absolutely communicate some of that, what is your plan B? If your one club save goes mm-hmm. really belly up all of a sudden, that's it. I mean, I, I had it, you know, like I say, I str- struggled in Mexico last year and just had to just walk away and start something new. Unfortunately, I was still early enough into the game cycle where, I could do that without, fee- you know, I, was, I've mm-hmm. got, I had plenty of time. You know, I had nothing, nothing sure. but time, which helped. Um, the only other one club save I've done was my very first um, football manager um, on stream save, which was mm-hmm. Sheffield Wednesday, um, three FMs ago. And it was early doors. It was successful. Got promoted after three years, which we shouldn't have done because um, we're still... We didn't have, I think I'd spent a total of about 500k in the first three seasons Mm -hmm. and got promoted, um, which was quite incredible. Had a really, really good first season in the Premier League, which we and you know, bedded ourselves in and thought, right, these are really solid foundations for long term success now. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then season five, I had a Colwyn Bay and (laughs) it was going hideously, and there was no. You know, I couldn't get the team to play. The results were all awful. I was in the boardroom. I was given, mm. I think it was like six games to save my job. Mm. Um, had a had a full on breakdown at about midnight on stream. <laughs> um, needing needing six points from my final two games. Uh, just came up with strikerless five Trek Artista formation. Beat somebody <laughs> one nil with it. <laughs> and then just rage quit before the last game because I was like, you know what, I. 
I don't want to. I, th- I, I was just sitting there thinking to myself, and I remember saying it over and over again to, to the chat. I was like, I shouldn't be in this position. The mm-hmm. fact that I've taken a club with no budget and, frankly, insane ownership, mm-hmm. and I've taken them from the championship to the Premier League, mm-hmm. and I've finished... I think we I think we scraped tenth, maybe even ninth season one in the Premier League. So I was like, so we weren't a million miles away from Europe, comfortably top half of the table. Yeah. And at this point in the the, the, the final season, <clears throat> you know, we were we we weren't in the relegation zone. We were <clears throat> still above the relegation places. I think just because form had been so bad. But I remember sitting there thinking, I shouldn't be in this position <clears throat> like that. The previous four seasons should have bought me so much grace with the club. Like, yep. doesn't matter. He's having a poor season. It's all right. He'll turn it around next year. And I think if the pressure from the board hadn't been there, I think I would have carried it on a little bit longer. I was also quite fortunate at that point that it was getting towards the end of, I think it was the FM21 cycle mm-hmm. anyway, because I didn't start streaming until. So my streaming career started the day after the championship season finished that year because Sheffield Wednesday got relegated on the last day. And I started a save with Sheffield Wednesday the day after. Yeah. So, you know, by the time I was streaming sporadically, by the time I got to that point, you know, there wasn't too much FM 21 left anyway. Mm. So I didn't have the pressure of thinking I need to start something else before the next game cycle begins. I could just, I think I messed around with the, with an old mad scientist database for, for a couple right. of weeks and that, that yeah. was it, you know? Yeah. But if that had been something I'd started to do, you know, if I'd had that experience, you know, this year, for example, I run mm-hmm. a one club save and doing the Wednesday and we're going to give it a proper and you get sacked after a, you're, you're mm-hmm. in that. Then you're like, oh, no. And especially because, you know, Sheffield Wednesday and my team, you know, I've very of course, that's talked the other about thing, Sheffield Wednesday it? for a while. That's the additional pressure, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I don't have the connection that Callum has with Slough, for example. Mm-hmm. The fact that Slough fans, like he tweeted yesterday about streaming and finishing his season. Yeah. Fans were tweeting Callum, wishing him good luck yeah. at the end of his <laughs> exactly. virtual. Like, that's such a cool thing. That's it like is. an absolute, like, but that there's that there's always going to be that additional pressure. I know that Callum has talked on when he's been streaming a bit this week about you know his thoughts about his content in the long run, mm-hmm. and everybody's everybody was in his chat. You know, we all felt the same way. That you know we're invested in Callum. And we're invested yeah, yeah, in the yeah. story he is telling this year. You know, yeah. it's not the you know he told a wonderful story last season with Slough, mystery box, develop that incredible bond with the club. Mm-hmm couldn't quite get them to, you know, couldn't quite get over the finish line for the save at the end, but Mm -hmm. told an incredible story. What a wonderful journey throughout. And this year it's still Slough, but it's Mm -hmm. Bill Slough. Different story, telling a different story. And people are invested in people like Callum. Mm -hmm. People aren't necessarily quite right. I would watch him do another 10 seasons in, uh, in the Vanarama easily. Because as long, it, as, long as there's a playoff at the end of it, as long as there's a playoff at the end of it, yeah. If there's if there's no playoffs, then he can get in the ocean. How dare he waste my time? Um, but it's I, I want I'm I'm interested in that story, and I think mm-hmm. the time scale doesn't matter as much. Yep. And I think you know Callum's in that fortunate position where he is you know considering what he does moving forwards with his content in terms of his streaming Mm -hmm. because he doesn't want to stagnate as a streamer. It's Mm -hmm. not because he has got the virtual board breathing down his neck. As I call you've not made it to the playoffs, Callum, you could get sacked now. Yeah. Cause that, you know, that's, that's a horrible, horrible feeling. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it must be hard, but like you say, Kevin, what is the plan B people that are listening to this podcast, people that are watching that do one club saves. Mm -hmm. Do you plan that additional content at the start of the year? Do you kind of just just wing it at the time? What, what's the next move? What's the next mm-hmm. logical step? You know, because sometimes it can be fun. And you like, I had it last year. I finished Scan- Scandinavia, still had a bit of time left. Yep. Spent a really, really fun season in the championship with West Ham, who not too dissimilar to your Stoke team, Kev, you know, still had some, you know, skamacker in the championship. I was like, <laughs> this is going to be great fun. Oh, this should be brilliant. He's like, boss, I want to go. He's like, sorry, I don't yeah. speak. I don't yeah, speak no, Italian. He's no, like, I'm understand. speaking English. Yeah. Sorry, I don't. I don't. And, oh, sorry. The, oh, it's, this is this is complicated. Sorry, mate. Um, Talk to me again to in me. November. Yeah, let's let's have, let's have a chat. Was, <laughs> oh, it's it's the first of February. Oh, you want to leave? Oh, sorry, sorry. Now I understand. Ah, moto bene. Okay, <laughs> right, we're good now. Okay, well, end of the season, you can go, mate. That's fine. Like, but it, it's great fun to be able to do. It. I fell upwards into that. I was lucky mm-hmm. that I found something that I was like, oh, this will just be this will be a bit of fun. But it's 
you're not always going to get lucky with it. So sure. please do let us know what your plans are and how you approach these kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. I think it's 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 fun to know. You know, I, I think having spent a couple of you know FM cycles now focusing more on kind of the journeyman kind of content and you know mm-hmm. get, that that's that's way more. I'd, that's kind of my my thing now. That's what I, yep. I enjoy yep. more. Too. I like mm-hmm. that freedom. So it's good yeah. and i will carry on making that content very soon i promise everybody sorry for being <laughs> slow for the last couple of weeks i'll be back so that's going to be good um Maybe. now there is there is an elephant in the room i think we need to address kev is there blimey i mean there i've got is. a big room but it's right behind you. he's massive he's got a big trunk and everything he's he's, he's just been back and forth all the time um uh, you have, are now in possession kev of a big gold belt aren't you here it is this Here it is. Belt. That big gold belt draped, for those of you that, for the audio listeners, uh, Kev Yeah, we're, we're a good a audio podcast. It's, you know. Great audio podcast. We definitely don't rely too much on visual references. Um, for the audio listeners, Kev has a big gold wrestling belt draped beautifully across here, his, here, his Here shoulder. is something for the audio listeners as I undo the Velcro to actually open up the belt to put it over my shoulder. Here you go. <laughs> ASMR with Kev. Yeah. Oh, satisfying that was. That was very satisfying. Uh, Kev, where'd you get your big gold belt, pal? Oh, I bought it because I'm sad. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was it was sent to me uh, by the lovely Michael, who is mm-hmm. uh, the lead guy behind the drafting competition that run uh, FM drafts, but in the style of wrestling, basically, mm-hmm. uh, called the World Heavyweight Championships. Um, and I have been its heavyweight champion for probably about a year or so, something like that, with Mm -hmm. a few defences in there, here and there, dotted about. Uh, It's something that I won from the lovely Wick Div a little while ago. Um, And it's uh, the the big gold belt has been suggested is on its way to me for about the last year, just because, and it just never quite (laughs) happened. Um, It arrived a couple of days ago, Rich, which was really fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I am now in possession of my World Heavyweight Championship, just in time to come up against the mighty Limo <laughs> next Friday and I might lose it and have to pass it on to him after a year of being the champ and having the title in my possession for a couple of days. Um, Limo's a bit scary, isn't he? I mean, he's a lovely guy, really, really fantastic guy, but in drafting terms, he's a bit scary. He knows what he's mm-hmm. doing. So I make no necessary guarantees other than, of course, my character in the uh, organisation. This is my belt. It's mine. You're not having it is a definite thing. But he's a bit <laughs> scary. It's going to be a bit of an interesting one to go through on Friday, but really, really looking forward to it because I get to spend the evening with Limo. Which is amazing, you know, how cool is that in itself? But yeah, I'm going to be defending my title uh, on Friday. It's going to be magnificent. It will be streamed either on the main World Heavyweight Championships uh, Twitch channel or or on mine or Limo's or whatever. You'll find all of us probably doing so. Uh, So come and check it out. It's going to be an evening. It's not just one and done. It's not like a 10-minute match and then whoever wins it takes the title. There's more to it than that that we'll talk to you a little bit as the week progresses. But Mm -hmm. uh, come and join us for that because it'll be fun. But yeah, I am slightly concerned that I now have the title (laughs) belt in my possession and I'm going to lose it at the first opportunity just because that's how these things work (laughs) out, isn't it? But yeah, I have my title, which is good. And it's quite heavy, Rich. You know, it sits on the Mm. shoulder very nicely, but it's still quite heavy but yeah it, it, there you go. it looks like it's got some weight to it mate it, it looks like it a, absolutely a, a, a does good quality um good quality belt that we we have been we we've been joking behind the scenes for, for quite a while because the talk of an actual physical belt for kev mm-hmm. yeah as, as you say it's been mentioned um <laughs> sporadically over the last Just a little 12 bit. months or so and we've always we, we've always joked as like oh won't, wouldn't it be ironic that it will arrive just in time <laughs> for a title defense against somebody like a lead and then it's exactly what's happened but hey i'm i am backing i am backing kev backing kev to the hilt yep so um, there, there might have been a particular IRL wrestler that I have been mentioned in terms of name to be like. Uh, I'm now distancing myself from that particular mm-hmm. fella because he doesn't seem to be the most pleasant of people necessarily. <laughs> no. Um, so it's now Kev freaking Rollins because it sounds as much <laughs> like Sep as I could get, basically. Um, so that's my wrestling persona. Uh, I am going to 
fight and claw my way to try and keep this as much as I can against Limo. The, the benefit of facing Limo, of course, is that unless he does something really, really weird, we kind of know how he's going to set up at least because mm -hmm. he's been doing the same sort of thing for the last couple of FMs and being very successful with it. So I'm imagining mm -hmm. I might encounter a 442. So the question mm. becomes, and Limo may well be listening to this because he's a lovely guy, but the question mm -hmm. becomes, do you combat with that with a 442 or do you go really narrow and leave him the wide areas but try and get through the middle of his two-man midfield? Or do you play three at the back or, you know, whatever? I haven't figured that one out yet. We've got a week to try and figure that one out. Um, but we're going to do something <laughs> to try and combat the fact that he's going to come at us with probably a 442 and see what happens. But yeah, really, really looking forward to it. Um, I did suggest to Michael when he said uh, the belt might be on its way. I says, do you just want to hold off for a week and just send it to Limo instead, <laughs> baby? Just if that works out rather than send it to me. But he said, no, you've got to have it. You've been champion for X amount of time, all that stuff. So it is here. I'm happy that it's here. Bring on Limo and we'll see what happens oh. this Friday. But I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be a great evening. And whatever mm. happens, I'll have had a good time. But I really want to keep the belt for one reason, Rich. Mm -hmm. It's mine. Absolutely is yours, Kevin. Absolutely is yours. Um, look, I, I am privy enough to know that the stipulations and, and what's going to be happening on Friday night. And I think we're in for a very exciting evening. Mm. It's going to be it's going to be great fun. Um, you know, I, you know, here at Foot Manager Therapy, we love Limo. I think everybody, it's, impo it's impossible to not. He's, he's one of the absolute best of us, is Limo. Yep. So get, just, Agreed. just, yeah, if there was some, if I was going to get battered at FM by somebody, you know, I'd be very, very happy for it to be Limo. <laughs> but he's, he's a great, he's, he's a great, great guy. And you're all right as well, I suppose, Kev. Thanks, and mate. I think. Uh, he's, he's calling well, himself he's calling himself king and i just can't have it i just no. can't have it Bless no him. no you no know, he can try exactly but it's all right exactly <laughs> exactly he's, he, he can he can try he can absolutely try but hey, if if it's now if it's now kev freaking rollins i i would like what i'd really really like more than anything else is I, i'd like you know to to take it all the way back to the pre seth freaking rolling days to the to the tyler black days ah. and i want to see you in the background swinging that tight around <laughs> above your head and the oh that imagine just um, imagine there, there is that. only about three foot between me and that wall just so you know <laughs> can make make it we can make the most of the space though can make the most of the space that's that's what i'm into now imagine that what, what an absolutely oh, glorious time for everyone involved no so look Best of luck to you, Kev. Thank you very Friday much. Night. Not, you don't need it. You don't need it. You're going to be fine. You're going to be we'll absolutely fine. do our very fine. best. Do your very, very <laughs> best. Exactly. That's how it works. So there you go. Um, so if you're at a loose end on Friday night, check out the uh, check out Kev and uh, and Limo streams. Check yep. out all the streams involved. I'm, I'm sure they'll they'll have a panel. I'm sure they'll be doing some behind the scenes there's, kind of stuff. There's also another title match uh, for one of the other belts, and also a tag match as well happening in and oh, around the same there sort is. of occasion. Yes. Uh, in the next, there's... little it's all happening this week, so they're on different mm -hmm. nights. But make sure you check them all out. Of course, because of course we have new tag team champions now as well, don't we? Yeah. Al Ali and Owen's reign of terror is over. <laughs> so reign. Is it really a reign if you terror? don't the belt? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fight me, boys. Uh, you won't. Um, there you go. So yeah, there's plenty. Yeah, plenty to keep an eye out for in terms of the old, uh, in terms of the old PVP and and the uh, the the. the um, <clears throat> the world heavyweight title matches and other belts so yep. keep an eye out over the course of the week that'll be loads and loads of fun and i think if we're going to talk about pvp stuff kev mm, go for should it we make a, should we make a, a little announcement of our own go on rich you can do oh, this oh shall we yeah, shall we do on. just that shall we do just that um look we've been talking about it for a little while and we have made an executive decision uh, Kev and I, between the two of us, uh, that on the, and let me just double check, so I've written it down, but I don't <laughs> trust myself, on 17th. the 17th of March, so that's in three weeks' time, 17th of March, FMT versus the community is back, baby. Yeah. Coming back. Come and play some football manager with us on the internet. Um, so if you want to play, drop us a message. 
I think now we can't we're not at the moment in a position to guarantee the participation of Callum and or Jeb mm -hmm. so we figured that you know because obviously Jeb is just away a lot with work at the moment yep. and Callum with a, a, a tiny baby in the house you know you know Indeed. setting aside time is not the easiest thing in the world to do by any stretch of the imagination so but Kev and I will both be there yep hopefully Callum and Jeb as well but there's um say no pressure on either of them to be in case mm -hmm. you're listening to this, boys, uh, before we have the opportunity to talk to you about it. Um, but come and play some football manager with us. So there'll be comparatively limited spaces. We do have a tendency previously to go on a bit of a first-come, first-served basis. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you are interested in coming and hanging out with us for the evening and playing football manager, drop us a DM. Um, get in touch with us via the Discord. Um, drop us a message on Twitter. However you want to do it, just say, hey, I would like to come and take part in an FMT versus the community. They are historically always brilliant fun. We have a yep. lovely old time. Um, stipulations and databases will be kind of announced a little bit closer to the time. Not mm -hmm. that it particularly matters. It's not particularly important. We don't take it particularly seriously. It's just an opportunity to come hang out with us. Unless we win this, and then, you know. Unless we win, then it's it. massively important. I've won yeah, yeah, one yeah. of them. So yeah. uh, oh, it's Jeb. It's about my Jeb's time. Jeb's won one. Come at me, peasant. Um, <laughs> so, you know, two great wins for pod so far. Uh, yep. Community, community, I think, are reigning champions, though. If I remember they last are. Time we did yeah, that. Community they are. are reigning champions. So we need to uh, put you in your place. <laughs> yeah, come and hang out. I will say this, actually. I will say this. I have a feeling, Ooh. and I don't want to, because obviously it's out of our hands, but I have a feeling that mm -hmm. ab around that kind of time, there might be a certain retro database that Ooh. might nearly be ready, according to a certain retro database creator who is wonderful, and we adore him and his name Indeed. is the Mad Scientist. Really? So, you know, I'm just, just saying, just saying, just saying just if saying. that retro database is out by then, then maybe, maybe, maybe. then maybe, you never know. You never know. But um, yeah, just drop us a DM. Let us know. Come and hang out with us. Um, you don't yeah. have to. There's no obligations to have to stream it. Nope. Nothing like that. The only thing I would recommend if you have is like a mic or the capacity to jump into a voice call with us. Because yeah. we just. All, that's the we fun all of the evening, big, isn't it? That's, the fun of, that's what makes it fun. We all get in a big voice chat on Discord and we just hang out with each other and we just we just have a good time. Mm -hmm. So if you've listened to podcasts for a while and think, oh, it might be nice to spend a bit of time and hang out with some new people. Let us know if you've done this before. Let us know um, if you've never done either of those things and have never listened to the podcast before. How do you know about it? Exactly. Like, how, how Who, are you? You? <laughs> Who are you? Let us know, you sneaky little sausages. Um, so, yeah, so come and hang out. FMT versus the community. Definitely. 17th of March. Spend some time. That would be the Sunday evening for the UK. Yes, viewers, Sunday, so you know. Sunday evening. We, we tend to start at around kind of 7 p.m because there'll be a few games to get through. Um, but yeah, so about 7, about 7 p.m. Normally we're done by about half past 10. So yeah. come, and spend, come and spend the night with us. We're good. We have a good time. Friends for life. That's how it works. <laughs> um, Kev, I think that that's pretty... I think if, if I just check the docket and the list of mm -hmm, things mm -hmm. we were going to talk about, I think we've, we've quite eloquently talked about them all. So I think so. Yeah. From my point of view, mate, I reckon that's probably a podcast. What I agree. Think? I agree. Yeah. It felt very podcast like and I had a lovely time. And um, so it's did good I. to have you back. Oh, it's, mate, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. Um, it's, you know, sometimes it's it's bittersweet to miss an episode because on the one hand, I, I miss talking to my friends. But on the other hand, I, I enjoy getting to listen to episodes as a listener again. So that's, mm. you know, yeah, works both ways for me. Um, I'd also like to point out before we start so goodbye as by the way, that um, since we began this segment talking about the uh, the World Heavyweight Championship, Kev has kept the belt on his shoulder. I have. Through and it looks Absolutely. incredible. It is so, mine. <laughs> it is yours. It is Kev's. It is Kev's. Um, Kev, if the people would like to watch you doing things this week, like mm. defending your World Heavyweight title, or... Yep. Starting your new adventure with Stoke City, or dare I say it, a, a, a to be decided um, FMT network. All of the football <laughs> managers. Because that's still a thing. Um, all is. the content, all the things, all the streams. Uh, where yes. can people find you doing that? You can find me at the United City FM on Twitch every weekday afternoon, 3 till 5 p.m. UK time. You can find me on the network save probably Monday or Thursday evening this week if Jeb's around and Rich is available. Mm -hmm. And definitely Friday evening on my streams again or on the World Heavyweight Championship stream defending my title against Limo. Come at me, Limo. Give it your best. Don't be <laughs> afraid, mate. Don't have fear. Have a lot of fear. No, don't. So much fear. 
whichever way, come and have a go. Well, it'll be good, good fun. <laughs> yeah. That's an amount of fear. Yeah. Uh, a, a, a to be decided amount of fear is key. <laughs> wonderful what about um, you rich what are you up to this oh, week are you gonna get a stream in do you think yes i will be back this week um things have, have calmed down behind the scenes for me a little bit now so i should have a little mm -hmm. bit more spare time this week so obviously to be determined network game evening will be uh, will be happening and what's the story will be back uh, i did a little you know i've mentioned at the start of the stream i've done a few little bits and pieces offline mm -hmm. um we're now in we, we've started our fifth season of the save so season two with ajax and it started well. A few things have happened behind the scenes, so we've got a few uh, em emotional goodbyes that we've we've Ooh. made, but we've 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 made some exciting uh, signings as well. So there'll be some updates and come and come and hang out, and we'll go through it all together, and we'll have a lovely time in the Netherlands. But that would be uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Rich Owens FM. Nice. Um, no need for Carlton today because he gets it wrong. <laughs> the big silly sausage. The silly um, sausage. So big silly sausage. So come hang out. Obviously, as well, it would be remiss of us not to say uh, twitch.tv forward slash Jabaru and uh, twitch.tv forward slash Y Callum as yep. well. Are, go check are, them both out. They are awesome out. and lovely. Aren't they just? Aren't they just? Um, so, yeah, go spend some time with them. Spend some with all of us. We'd appreciate it. It's good. It's good. It's good. We have a good time. We have a good time. Uh, Kev, thank you so much for spending another wonderful Sunday morning with me, pal. Thank you. It's been an absolute joy. Oh, you. Oh, uh, and you. thank you, the audience, for listening. We appreciate each and every one of you. You're all good people and you validate our decisions to talk about Football Manager on a weekly basis. It's very kind of you. Thank you very much. But I think that quite succinctly wraps up another episode of Football Manager Therapy. Thank you so much for listening. We will catch you on the next one. Take care. Love you lots. Bye bye. <laughs>